I bet you most people that play virtual reality, especially people that have a standalone headset, something like a Quest or a Vive Flow, would love to be playing PC VR. However, gaming PCs can be quite expensive, especially the really powerful ones, and a ton of you guys might already have some form of a computer at home and are wondering whether you could be gaming PC VR on that. So what is up everyone, I'm Mystical, and today we're jumping in to a classic on this channel. A few years back, we did a video on playing PC virtual reality under minimum requirements. However, multiple years have passed now, and we've had great advancements in technology and what it can do in order to boost those frames. So today, I'll be showing you not only exactly how you can play PC VR under minimum requirements and bypass all of those restrictions that may be stopping you from doing so, but I will also show you that you can be doing it quite comfortably. So let's jump right in. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be grabbing an older GPU from my NAS that is under the minimum requirements and that is exactly what we're going to be shoving in to my main gaming PC and firing up PC VR. Except this time, unlike last time, we're going to be using multiple technologies in order to make it run a lot better and we're also going to be trying out a bunch more games. Before we begin, I feel like we should actually talk about what the minimum requirements for VR are, as they're not actually as high as some of you might think, even though they differ between something like the Oculus system and Steam VR. The minimum requirements for Oculus's software are an Intel i3-6100, which is a 6th generation i3 processor, or an AMD Ryzen 3 1200, or an FX4350. For the GPU, you've got a GTX 1050, or a Radeon RX 470, which again is not very high, but we've still got lower in here right now. As an alternative graphics card, you can have a GTX 960 with 4 gigabytes or an AMD Radeon R9 290. You need to have over 8 gigabytes of RAM, and this is recommended anyway. I don't recommend you run VR with less than 8 gigabytes, Windows 10 or higher, and one USB 3.0 port. The 3.0 port we will not be using. Steam VR minimum requirements are very similar. For example, you need Windows 7 or higher, an Intel Core i5-4590 or an AMD FX-8350 or higher, you need 4GB of RAM, which again I would recommend higher anyway, you need a GTX 970 or a Radeon R9 290 or higher. You also apparently need broadband internet connection. I beg to differ. Okay, so I've taken the NAS down and removed the graphics card, which is now here. This is our GTX 760, and those of you that have been watching the channel for a while now might realize that this is the exact same graphics card that we used those few years back. And the reason I'm doing this is not just because this is the only other graphics card that I own, but also because I feel like this is a perfect middle ground. These things go for really cheap nowadays, and the performance in it is around something that somebody that doesn't have a computer with minimum requirements for VR might have. That, and also, I want to see how it performed then versus how it performs now with all the new technologies that we have. So, let's jump right in to putting it inside my main PC. For that, I need to switch the microphone, so excuse me, but for a while, it's going to be a little bit worse. And this time, we're not gonna drop it. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> a lot of dust, a lot of dust. Now we can switch off the power inside the PC, just in case. This is my RX 5700 XT. This is the GPU that has definitely survived the longest with me, and I'm actually surprised that it's still going. But it's now getting replaced. If you compare the two, there's definitely a size difference. Now we can turn the power back on. Oh, oh, we've got the BIOS. Now just to put the rest of the screws in to make it look all pretty. I'm back, the display is launched. All drivers and everything are now installed. Everything seems to be working correctly, but let me show you something. If any of you have ever tried to run PC VR under minimum requirements on a computer, you would know that if you launch something like the Oculus software, for example, it will not let you do that. You cannot connect an Oculus Rift or Oculus Quest headset to a computer that is under minimum requirements. It will actually straight up give you an error and tell you that this is impossible. Right now, for some reason, the error message that would normally show up inside my Oculus software isn't showing up. So let's try connect through Oculus Link, something that used to not work, and see what shows up. That's actually really, really interesting. In the past, if you had a PC with under minimum requirements, you would not be able to use Oculus Link. However, now I've connected the Quest Pro through Air Link, and it does seem like it might want to turn on. However, nothing is showing up 
inside the headset itself. I've been waiting here for quite some time now, and I am still stuck on the three dots. Meaning that just like last time, it seems that this is where our problems are going to begin, the Oculus software. How on earth do we launch VR if we cannot launch it through Oculus' software? Well, there's a simple bypass for this, and that bypass is Virtual Desktop. You see, Virtual Desktop is going to allow you to jump into VR without actually needing to meet those minimum requirements. And you're not only going to be able to play those Steam games, but also your Oculus titles, in case that's what you're worried about. So let's jump in through Virtual Desktop and confirm that this still works. So here I am in Virtual Desktop. I can see the display right now, but what I want to do is I want to click Launch Steam VR and confirm that this will still throw me into Steam VR. Even though, you know, from playing this on a phone, I know that this is pretty much already going to work. And here we are. We are now in virtual reality completely under minimum requirements. And I do realize that this is just Steam VR Home, so of course this is going to be running smoothly. But let's jump in to something that requires a little bit more power and see how well this runs without any modifications whatsoever to begin with. As our first title, we started off with Beat Saber, and there is no mods here whatsoever. We're running at medium quality inside virtual desktop and 100% resolution scaling inside Steam VR settings. The game actually ran all right. There were quite a few major hiccups from time to time where the game would freeze up and cost you a few blocks, but other than that, it was running at a near constant 90, which is the maximum refresh rate that we were going for. After this, however, we turned on AMD FSR, which is Fidelity Effect Super Resolution. This mod is available for most VR games and nowadays even has a GUI. In case you want to download it for yourself, you can check out the link down below. It's on GitHub because it's all open source, and I think it's fair to say that with AMD FSR, yes, the game did look quite a bit worse, however, it ran a lot better. And with simple games like Beat Saber, where all you need to do is see the arrows on the blocks, this is perfect, as the arrows are still perfectly visible, and all you need to do is hit it in the right direction. And with more FPS, that's more power to you. After this, we jumped into the forest, and straight away, I knew that this wasn't going to go very well. Even just inside the menu, the game was already running pretty terribly. Jumping into the game itself, we got about 8 FPS and a lot of latency. So after seeing this, I brought down the resolution scaling inside Steam VR to about 48%. This made the game quite a bit more playable. However, I decided to add on top of this. Injecting AMD FSR into the game with about 50% scaling gave us some really good results. Text was barely legible, however, it was still legible. Inside the game itself, everything ran really nicely. And I wouldn't get lost here. This still looks a lot better than it did on our phone setup. This made the game quite playable, with it being at 90 FPS at nearly all times. So I have to give this one a fairly big thumbs up, as the forest is not a very easy game to play. So we decided to bring out the big guns, and we jumped in to Half-Life Alex. This was absolutely terrible. The menu ran all right, however the second you actually jumped into the game, you would be getting about 4 FPS and a ton of latency. Bringing down the resolution scaling did help a little bit, however not enough for me to actually be able to call this playable in any way. AMD FSR can also not be injected into Half-Life Alex, making this an absolute loss. Half-Life Alex could unfortunately not be saved on the GTX 760. If you guys are playing Half-Life Alex under minimal requirements, please do let me know how you're doing it down in the comment section below. And after this, I jumped into one final title, VRChat. VRChat is a game a lot of people ask me about every time I run PC VR on something that it's not supposed to be ran on. It seems that a lot of people would love to be running PC avatars on VRChat, but don't have a VR-ready PC. Well, unfortunately here, this was another loss. While VRChat in the past would allow you to inject AMD FSR and bring up your frames by a ton, nowadays with easy anti-cheat, this is not possible, meaning we were essentially left with whatever mercy this was going to give us stock. And I did also bring down the resolution inside Virtual Desktop to Potato here, just to make sure that we were giving it the maximum possible chance. And even with that, I wouldn't call it 100% playable. Which is why I would love you guys to tell me how you're running PC VR under minimum requirements down below, as I'm sure quite a few of you guys are doing it. If you're not running AMD FSR, what else are you running? And which games have you successfully played with it? So, all in all, 
Is it possible to play Steam VR under minimum requirements comfortably? Well, I would say yes, very much so. Depending on which game you want to play, and depending on how low you're willing to bring down your resolution, you could end up having a very playable time. The Forest, for example, yeah, it didn't look the prettiest, but even I myself would be willing to play a game that looks like that if I didn't have any other option. And I can see a lot of people definitely willing to bring down their resolution quite a bit in order to be able to witness PC VR. But what do I know? Let me know your opinions down below. Either way though, that is going to be it for today's video. I'm happy to bring back a classic and show you guys how it works nowadays. And if you guys like this video, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too. But let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and check out our Reddit down below, where I would love to see your results on this project. And of course, if you have any issues, you can also tag me there. Thank you so, so much to all the lovely names going off to my right right now. Those guys are my Patreons and they are helping me out so, so much. So seriously, guys, much love. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified of future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.